different kind of Christmas special because it's not so much about the holiday as it is thickening the mythology of the My Little Pony universe. But if your holiday usually includes people you love bickering while freezing to death, then do I have a special for you! One thing I really like about the new My Little Pony series is what it chooses to do with holiday episodes, conceptually anyway. They take a real holiday and reinterpret it not just with a new name, but an Equestria-specific history of how those traditions came to be, while impressively keeping a lot of the history in the same spirit as the real holiday. In this case, the rebranding of Christmas as Heartswarming Eve is literally an episode about the holiday's origin, which also happens to be the history of the pony's entire country. World building! You're doing it right! It's shown in the form of a play being performed by our main six characters, who start the episode with the worst game of I Spy ever, and by arguing and getting on each other's nerves. This will be a trend, as it turns out the origin of Equestrian Christmas is heavily rooted in bitching. Long ago, the three tribes of the Pegasi, Unicorns, and the Earth ponies lived a strained but separate coexistence. The unicorns raised the sun and the moon, the pegasi controlled the weather, and as payment for these services that all three tribes needed to live, the earth ponies were forced to grow food for all three tribes, until a mysterious blizzard wiped out all the crops and forced all the tribes to confront one another. That's right, this is a My Little Pony episode about political and racial tensions! The heads of the three tribes meet, and it's about as productive as the current congress. Oh! After the demand for the non-existent food and the blaming of the pegasi and the unicorns for the storm, the three leaders and their number twos venture out to find a new land away from the blizzard. But again, we run into the childlike mentality that if you're someone who appears to be a terrible and intolerant politician, it must mean you're a terrible person in every other way as well, as we watch the leaders abuse their underlings all throughout their search. The season of cheer and goodwill, everyone! Not that it's the first holiday special to showcase tons of negative emotions, you gotta juxtapose how awesome camaraderie and generosity is somehow. Sure, there's something conceptually fascinating about seeing three of our main characters have excuses to act like irredeemable pricks, but the onslaught of one-dimensional jackass is probably why this episode isn't considered one of its best. But MLP Fim is a better animated and better written show than a lot, and it's ultimately the balance of the varying personalities of the three leaders with the expression and physical comedy that keeps this episode entertaining to watch. Though individually as characters, you notice how Rainbow Dash and Rarity are portrayed here as one-dimensionally as their rough and snobby personalities would be portrayed if it was a different show? On the other hand, where Pinkie Pie and the rest of the show has to walk a tightrope between being respectable and empathetic while being crazy and random, here she is fully left off her leech to portray somebody as completely insane. And it works. Especially when she put her next to snarky, down-to-earth Applejack. Are you suggesting that I'm reading the map wrong? Absolutely not, your chancellorness. It's just that there are holes in the map and... Of course! How else could I see where I was going? It's just that the map is also upside down. I got a news flash for you, Cookie. The Earth is round. There is no up or down. And AJ's character name is Smart Cookie. I just love that. The two of them are just an amazing comedy duo in this episode. AJ is a fantastic straight man, as has been sadly proven by the rest of the series, showing AJ is usually at her best when she's sharing the spotlight with someone else. Nobody understands you like I do, AJ! And again, the world building is well reflected here, as the personalities of the three tribe leaders, which do also line up with the main six true personalities as well, also reflect the culture of their respective races. The Pegasi are warriors, so they're portrayed as aggressive, the unicorns can do magic, Magic, so they're shown as refined, cultured, and snooty, and the Earth ponies are rustic and down to earth, and implied to be low on book learning. What a shocker! An Earth pony with no ideas! You know, Hufflepuffs. The three tribes all end up finding the same land, which of course leads to more arguing until it suddenly starts snowing again, making them retreat into a cave where the three tribe leaders continue to bicker until the blizzard literally encases them in ice. Only then does Clover the Clever Twilight remember, oh, there are these things called Windigos. They cause blizzards and are attracted to haters. Whoops. 
Slipped my mind. Okay, they could have been legends even then, I don't know. The number twos then realize they hate their bosses more than they hate each other, and it's apparently this touching camaraderie that causes the unicorn to spontaneously produce a kingdom hearts lock, which keeps the cold at bay. And the three bond by sharing stories and singing songs, and it's their friendship that ultimately causes the snow to melt. That's right, you heard it. This season of generosity and goodwill came to be when three people bonded over how much they hated their bosses. How to dispel your hatred? Just hate someone else way more! And the episode ends with the three tribe leaders coming together and founding the country now known as Equestria, and with an imitation holiday choir that ultimately fails because the lyrics are terrible. The fire of friendship lives in our hearts and Nope! Nope! Never do that again! Oh, and there's some foreboding snow after the play when the main six start arguing again. History and repeating, and so on. Like I said, it's more of a world-building episode than a holiday one, and its credits are largely rooted in that. Giving a fictional world history really helps to make it more relatable and engaging, and provides lots of information for fans to use in their own fan works, because why else does the show exist? Really? The animation and the comedy makes it entertaining enough as a standalone, and I do like that the traditions of Heartswarming Eve basically come from just the tactics for enduring winter, which is exactly where all the traditions of real winter holidays come from. I just have two questions. One, why does the founding flag of Equestria have Celestia and Luna on it? Don't they not exist yet? The unicorns raised the sun and the moon. Okay, they just wanted the audience to know what they were talking about. But the legit question, if this is all history on where Equestria got its heartswarming eve traditions, sure you explain the song sung in the cave became the holiday carols, but then what is with all the greenery? That had absolutely no place in this story. Is it Wendigo repellent? Did someone decide it symbolized the endurance of life in the dead of winter? I don't know, maybe this actually took place in the summer and this was circumvented with some pagan pony holiday. The important thing is, everyone learned how easy lessons just about getting along can apply to larger world issues. Yes, we too might live in a peaceful place if hostility was proven to cause natural disasters, and everyone could literally be saved by just having the warm fuzzies. And let's face it, even then most people would probably choose to freeze rather than admit they're wrong. No darn it, pessimism isn't what the holidays are about, it's about hope and giving and believing in the best for your fellow man. Pony species. So Animaniacs, have a great and loving holiday. Check my Facebook for more holiday specials, and good night, Animaniacs!